Hi. <laughs> okay, so I guess that answers the question, how are you tonight? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what emotion that's supposed to represent, okay, but I'll just assume it's happiness. So who do we have here in the audience tonight? Are there any single ladies in the house? <laughs> okay. Where are my lesbians at? <laughs> any confused straight boys out there? Yeah, I, I see you. Don't worry, that was me, age 13. It's just a face, don't worry. <laughs> Any low-key bisexuals out there? And what about the furries? Got any furries? <laughs> Found them! FBI! There they are! Go, go, go! I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, in this room tonight, everybody is valid, okay? Everybody except for me, obviously. <laughs> I'm just happy that I was correctly introduced as Daniel Howell there, because um, I don't know if you saw this, but I tweeted the other day. But as you can see in this photo, VidCon printed Dad is not on fire on my official pass. It's not funny. No. How many times have I been to this event? Do I deserve this? They, they did me really dirty, didn't they? But here I am, and you know, after my long, painful, emotional break, I am back, and it turns out I was a massive queer the whole time. It's, it's genuinely quite surreal, as, you know, this is my first time going out while being out, really, and... started a completely new life. I am baby. Really? <laughs> yes, he is! Big baby. On, on the inside, I am small baby. <laughs> Physically, I am very tall baby. Sorry, it's getting very weird. What I'm trying to say is it's an exciting time for me, right? It's a very special year for VidCon too, because this is the 10th VidCon, which is crazy. I've been to most of them, which has given me a crisis. That is 10 years of nerds that never leave the house, going outside just to be really awkward with each other in real life. It's a very beautiful thing like, to that's see. The <laughs> to this day, I don't understand when people meet me and they're like, wow, you're really awkward. It's like, yet yeah, no shit, I'm not lying about my personality on YouTube. What did you expect from me? My entire creative identity is just missing high fives and having a sad resting face. So <laughs> that's who I am, it's my brand, it's what you should expect from me, okay? Just because it's relatable doesn't mean it's a good thing. Um, but also, 2019, very special, because this is the 10th anniversary of my first ever YouTube upload. <laughs> Catch a block, so don't do it, okay? No, I'm... Sorry. I don't know what's wrong with you. I shouldn't have even referenced it, should I? But no, there is... I have been doing the same thing for an entire decade. We are all dying. Yes, we are. You're dying. You're, you're dying. Yes, you are. Sorry. Um, just to say, is anyone in this room 10 years old or younger? Just... Okay, couple hands. Oh. Don't mind me, just gonna yeet myself into oblivion. That's nice, okay. I'm not gonna think about that. But let's be real, when I say 10 years of YouTube uploads, it hasn't been a consistent 10 years, has it? Uh, let's be real, does it count as 10 years if I didn't actually upload a proper video for 15 months? I mean, I loved it every now and then. I think I remember the password, maybe. Uh, I was never one for the, the weekly upload because my creative process was, you know, a lot of having an existential crisis, banging my head on the carpet for three days, writing, and then just dragging around the camera and filming myself in the bathroom or something. Ten years is That's a long time process. to do something that freaking weird, okay? I, I have a very strange life. And I have commitment issues. So doing this one thing for such a long time, I'm very impressed with myself. It's like if, if oh, thank you. Oh, you're impressed with me. I don't like it though. I like to rebel. I don't commit to anything. If someone says, please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle, I'm like, don't tell me what to do. Maybe, I mean, I don't want to, but what if I want to just stick my leg out splat? Uh, so I'm quite impressed with myself. 
But after I uploaded my Trying to Live My Truth video, that was all about authenticity and the fact that you have to be honest with who you are if you want to be happy, I just vanished from the internet. Yeah. I mean, not completely, because you know, I was still shitposting on Twitter and desperately craving attention on Instagram and caring way more about a Sims life than my own life on a gaming channel. Uh, But my channel was just mysteriously empty, which made the question of the first half of 2019, where the hell is Dan? Where he go? What are you doing? When suddenly, a year without uploading, he comes back with a 45 million No, 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 it's not a good thing. The audacity of me to upload such a long video to YouTube. What was I? I don't respect your time. And I didn't even give you a good performance. I didn't even cry like a beauty guru <laughs> addressing some drama. It was, I didn't know it. I'm the most serious, heartfelt story of my entire life, and I'm just standing there like making off puns. I have some emotional Please, issues, clearly. Um, but some people thought, oh, Dan uploaded. I'll just watch this quickly in bed. Half an hour later, oh my god, we get it, you're gay. Hurry up, Jesus. <laughs> I did in fact do something in my personal life that no one knows. It was a big commitment. It's something that I put a lot of time and energy into and it ended up being a very intense journey that was, you know, something for me being quite a mysterious, secretive person that doesn't like to share because I'm full of shame and other reasons. I, I never told the internet. But do you want to know what this thing was? Earlier this year, I signed up to run the London Marathon that Wait a second! Wait a second! Oh, yeah. Mixed reaction from you guys there, because yes, you uh, anybody who knows me was kind of doing a little laugh there. Because um, Daniel Howling, it's actually an oxymoron for exercise. Yeah, it's literally the complete opposite. Recreational activity, I've never done it. I've never chosen to exercise, never did sport, ever. Skipped every single game to lesson at school. The most exercise I've ever chosen to do is playing Dance Dance Revolution, okay? And that's... that's <laughs> did I call it or did I call it? Act, and if I go into some house and there's some four-year-old girl on a dance mat doing some bad cover of Black Eyed Peas, I will kick her ass, okay? <laughs> I will destroy her. So running more than once, that was something completely new to me in my entire life. So why the hell did I decide to do this, right? Well, I thought that me running a marathon would actually be a great idea for several reasons. Firstly, if I train to run a marathon, then I'll just naturally become really fit and healthy. All these years of trying to eat right and exercise for no reason, no, if I do this, it'll just happen automatically. Genius, right? And you know, good physical health, it helps your mental health. And if I had abs, I'd probably be naked on Instagram all day, so there's lots of angles to this, right? Also, importantly, the whole point of the London Marathon is that it's an opportunity to raise money and awareness for a charity. And that's a really good thing to do, right? Especially with someone with my platform, because not only does it help make the world a better place, but it would make me look really good, which is also really important. And I'll enjoy that feeling because I have no time for altruism or no need for it, okay? Enjoy being a good person. Um, as well as that, I figured it would just be quite a good story. Because you know me, a young British guy that has publicly struggled with mental health, overcoming all of it in this epic test of physical and mental endurance to say, Hey! No depression, anxiety, paranoia, various food addictions, gay trauma, etc. I stomp on you with my chunky running shoes. Conquering all the issues of my life. It would be a really good story, wouldn't it? Well, I, I bet you all know where this is going. Uh, this is a past tense story I'm telling right now. And don't get me wrong, okay? I trained for this marathon in those wet, cold winter months. I was out there jogging in shorts a few times and it was very difficult because I literally couldn't run a hundred meters without being on the verge of death but I would signed up to it which is a very formal intimidating process and I told people because personally 
Nothing motivates me like guilt and shame. It's the fear of disappointing people. You know, that's what really gets me up in the morning. So I told my family and I told my friends and they were like, wow, you gon' die. This is a, this is a I mean, you go, Dad. Yeah, you got this. This is amazing. I felt so much love and encouragement from the people around me, but still, I didn't feel confident enough to tell all of you and people on the internet because the stakes were so high, and if I failed, you know, if I just fell over halfway through, that would have been humiliating, which is, you know, a shame, because I'm sure your support could have made all the difference to me, but I gave it my best training for this race, and I guess the moral of this story is that sometimes your best actually isn't good enough. It isn't. That's how. Oh, oh, you're so sympathetic. And then some of you are like, <laughs> yeah, two different kinds of people in this room. But it, it was hard because, you know, after all the training and telling people, I carb loaded about 20,000 calories worth of sweet potatoes. I ended up pulling out from doing the race the night before. Okay. Literal the worst. I did all that and then at the last minute fail. My mission to conquer mental fail, health though. and being this amazing symbol for resilience and growing past all your things. It turns out mental health won. Yeah. Uh, whoops. Which it, it's not the ending that you wanted to hear, right? But it's what bloody happened, so you have to deal with it. Hey, life's not fair. I just didn't feel ready. And this was quite a big deal, even after my months of training. My fitness level at the start was so, so low, there was just no hope for me. And because I was afraid of telling you guys to come support me, then I felt like, you know, this opportunity to support the charity was wasted. And then at the hardest moment, you know, the most difficult thing, other than digesting all of the potatoes that I ate the night before, was having to tell the family members and friends that I told I was doing this, that I wasn't going to do it. And that's hard, you know. I mean, talking to people generally, but specifically disappointing them, letting down people that really believed in you. And the thing that made this the hardest was probably my mum, because in that night before the race, I was just about to call her and be like, Mum, yeah, I have to tell you, I'm not actually doing that thing. Guess what my mum texted me? This photo. Mom, oh my god. So that was hard, telling everyone I wasn't doing it, but their initial sponsors were nice, you know, they were like, it's okay, don't beat yourself up, I'm sure you can do it some other point in the future, I'm proud of you for just trying. But um, a couple weeks later, after a few more conversations, suddenly the real tea started to spill itself. My mum said to me, to be honest, I thought it was a bad idea that you signed up. Oh, okay. My friends, yeah, when you told us, you were like, Dan, really, that's never gonna happen. Excuse me, you just spent months cheering me on. What the hell, people? You know that paranoid thought in your head of everyone's being really nice, but what if they're all lying and actually nobody believes in me? This was literally that happening to me in the most extra way possible. So thanks, I guess, but it wasn't a total disaster. I did increase my fitness level from zero to one. I got to actually <laughs> explore London for the first time after living there for five years, as I never actually went outside before. But in a way, me saying no at the last minute was a victory in itself, okay? Sometimes in life we feel all this pressure to do things just because we feel like it's the right thing to do, what other people are telling us to do, or what society wants. And, you know, to say, I'm going to be honest with myself, I can't do that, or just, I actually don't want to do that thing, and that's the right decision. So, yeah, epic fail, I didn't run a marathon this year, but I learned to be okay with trying something out of my comfort zone and being totally comfortable with accepting defeat. So, other than uh, coming to terms with how gay I was and thinking about the rest of my career, that is the time that I failed to run a marathon and what the hell I was actually up to for several months earlier this year. That's the truth. It's strange that 
sharing these stories and the details with my life are so important to me and to a lot of you, especially making myself less available this year so I could go take the time to deal with my sexuality and do a bit of running for no reason. You know, it was good and it was bad, but reflecting on all the things that I've been doing on recent years and, you know, what I want to keep doing in the future, it made me think why and what my life would have been like if 10 years ago when I made that Hello Internet, what if I just thought, that's not worth my time uploading a YouTube video. What would my life have been? It would have been very different. I am saying worse, okay, just for the record. You're staring at me like, uh, Dan, excuse me. No! My internet is a good thing. Mostly. Betcha I'd still have all the same problems though if I finished law school and ended up as like a weird barrister somewhere. I'd be just as awkward and sad and secretly gay. But instead, you know, my life is a journey that I chose to express on the internet because after all, what is better than just suffering? Monetizing that suffering. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> why Dan's a fail, or admit all these horrendously embarrassing stories like how I got fired or kicked out of the USA to the Bahamas, that's the thing that happened. <laughs> Depression and authenticity and sexuality is that by creatively expressing these things, it helped for me to process them and accept them. And if telling these stories helped any of you, well then that's just lovely, isn't it? It was all worth it. All the time. Today and everyone watching this on the internet for everything that's happened in the last 10 years and as for what's next for Dan, do you want to know? What yeah. I'm having for dinner later, do you think I've planned the rest of my whole career? No. Yeah. I feel like I've just entered this new chapter of my life, I want some time to reassess and reflect and decide what I want to do instead of just jumping straight back into things, but don't worry. You know, some things never change, and as this decade on YouTube has shown us, it is very clear that I will always be that incredibly awkward guy named Dan that will happily tell the stories of all the bad things that happen in my life so you feel better about yours. You're welcome.